My name is Nancy Bird and I'm the Senior Director of Community Investment and Engagement at United Way Waterloo Region Communities. United Way is a community organization that focuses on fundraising and funds distribution within our community. We are uh, national, we are international, but in each community we focus on what is local. We raise the money here and we give the money out to organizations that are doing really important work in our community based on the needs of this community. Everything from basic needs like food, shelter and safety through to mental health, as well as programs and services that address social isolation by helping people connect to each other and find supports and build relationships in their own neighborhoods and communities. You really never know when it's gonna to happen to you. I can tell you that I have used services that United Way funds before I even knew they were funded by United Way. My family has, my friends have, and we have heard so many stories time and time again about how an individual or a family was just that one step away from crisis and they didn't realize it until they happened. And for us to have a strong social service network in this community, to have the agencies that we can all turn to when things do go wrong, we need United Way to provide funding to do that. The goal for United Way every day is to understand the needs in our community, to understand what's most important so that we can support uh, everyone who lives here, and then to make sure that we are working with a network of agencies who will provide the kinds of supports and services that are required for individuals and families right here in Waterloo Region. We invest uh, millions of dollars every year and we can't do that without the support of the community and it's really that coming together of donors, volunteers and the agencies doing the work and United Way as that sort of central uh, piece of bringing all those things together that makes a huge difference in the lives of everyone including me and my family. We're here at the Cambridge Shelter Corporation in Cambridge. This organization provides essential services to those experiencing homelessness, shelter, food, and mental health supports to those who really need it most. My name is Wayne Paddock, and I'm the manager of mental health and housing services here at the Cambridge Shelter Corporation. So Cambridge Shelter Corporation started about 17 years ago when they had significant folks experiencing homelessness um, in the city. Um, an organization started in the bottom of a church, um, which then uh, created this lovely building that's behind us now and they've been in this facility for about 15 years. We provide services for folks who are experiencing uh, short-term or long-term homelessness. A lot of our clientele are folks who have significant mental health or substance use issues. So I've been a mental health nurse now for about 15 years working in the community. I've been working in the city of Cambridge now for eight years as a community outreach nurse. I realized several years ago that there was a need for addressing the mental health and substance use issues within our most vulnerable population. When the pandemic hit, we realized very quickly that we needed to make changes within our facility. We had to decrease our numbers from about 120 um, down to a maximum of 64. Uh, currently, we have about 35 folks um, using our facility. Our zero cases to date um, is a testament to the, the work and the new policies that we put in place around uh, sanitizing our environment and social distancing uh, within our facility. And that's due to the great work of our, our cleaning staff, our housing team and our management. The relationship between Bridges Shelter and the United Way I think has been ongoing for several years, well before I came on board. Our executive director, Ann Tinker, has been working closely with United Way um, to access grant money, to access community funding, donations um, that have gone a long way to support the programming that we offer um, here at the Bridges Shelter. My name's Diane Shields and I work at Bruce Residence right now. My name is Lindsay Shields and I'm a resident at Bruce Residence on Concession Street in Cambridge. And now I'm also an employee of the residence working there at night. We got kicked out of our house in, in Waterloo because I was in the hospital and couldn't pay the rent and our landlord wouldn't uh, accept any excuses. He just basically issued an order of eviction. The bridges put a roof over our heads and food in our stomach. And it was January, so naturally it was cold. So we managed to stay warm. And they had decent staff who listened to you talk about your problems. There's a, there's a lot of reasons people wind up being homeless. Some may have addictions, some may have our situation where we got kicked out. Because we're living strictly on our pensions, it's very hard to find somewhere to live. People in general seem to, well, I was the same way 
kind of look down on everybody that that's in these things and you really you don't realize that but there are people the circumstances are just bad like in our case we just got in bad circumstances and without it i don't know what we would have done i mean a lot of a lot of people don't have a place like this a lot of people are living on the street and that's not right you know that's a problem when you've got whole buildings to devoted to them. So here at the Bridges Shelter, we're always looking for help from our community and we're always looking to build relationships within our community. So we're asking at this time that you continue to make donations um, that goes towards facility upgrades, things that we're trying to do to keep our environment safe and our residents safe. Cleaning supplies are always welcome, donations of personal protective equipment. Um, so we're always looking for opportunities to partner with um, organizations in our community to ensure that our most vulnerable population is kept safe. So doing this job, it's, uh, it's a very rewarding opportunity. Um, it makes me feel like I'm actually giving back. And, uh, you know, we're, we're all uh, very uh, close to being um, in, in a situation such as some of our folks that are here. I always say that we're very fortunate to have what we have as working individuals and, and mentally well individuals. So to be able to give back to, to folks who have um, been uh, employed at some time, had you know a house and had um, everything that we have. It's it's really rewarding to be able to work with them uh, to help them get them back to uh, to that to that goal. So I just ask that we continue to you know have respect and dignity for the folks who are experiencing this right now, and and that uh, we can all work as a community to help move them forward back into uh, into a home. We're here at Horizon in Kitchener. Horizon provides a variety of supports to our community. Mental health supports through counselling, financial literacy and credit counselling, and neighbourhood work, building capacity right where people live, helping them build relationships and supports. My name is Debbie Engel and I'm the Director of Community Services for Horizon. Horizon Family and Community Services is a mental health agency that focuses on mental health and well-being for our community and they're focused on supporting all people in the community around a sense of belonging, resilience, and wrapping services around families to ensure their mental health and sense of belonging in their community. Within the organization, we serve um, between 12 and 13,000 people in a year. We run two community centers within regional housing, and the United Way has allowed us to be able to um, fund those centers. My name is Dan Young. I'm a clinical counselor with Horizon Family and Community Services. And so I work with the clinical team, so we see clients primarily individually. We see adults, we see children, we see a whole range of people in between. And we primarily help people by having them come in and we do counseling with them. So we sit with them, we hear their stories, we try to find ways that we can help them to make positive changes to move forward. We also help by running groups. So we have a whole variety of different groups. I run one of our anger management groups where we have groups of people together to journey about learning and change. There's a huge increase in mental health needs. Um, so where you would typically see one in five people struggling with mental health, we're seeing one in three. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have moved almost exclusively to be doing all of our counseling online, either by phone or on video. It was a significant change and we've seen huge benefits. Uh, personally, I can share that I miss seeing clients in person. I'm really looking forward to that opportunity to do that again soon, but I've been so thankful and so humbled by the opportunity to continue to meet with people. We've had something called the Friendly Voice Program. It's a program where people, they might not need ongoing regular counseling, but they need someone to connect with them, someone to be that feeling of community that someone cares. And I know we've had volunteers who are helping to do that to support people in our community in those needs. My name is Brittany Culcher and I'm a community services supervisor at Cries and Family and Community Services. I also partially work with the Pathways to Education program which works out of the Kingsdale community and the Chandler Mowat community providing supports to families, youth and children. We work with 600, about 620 students um, who are in high school and we work to help them explore um, different avenues while they're in high school. So whether that's getting part-time employment, finding spaces to volunteer, um, finding ways to give back to their community um, with the end goal of helping them achieve success in whatever success means for them. Only about 20% of our counselings are people who can afford to pay. So 
United Way's funding allows us to offer um, a sliding scale fee, and so families who can't afford it at all have access to counselling where they otherwise wouldn't. They also provide us with the opportunity to be connected to organizations to, for volunteering. And so funding is a piece of it, but the volunteer and the organizational connections to the larger community is a huge piece of what they bring to um, our community and our organization. We're always looking for volunteers for our Pathways programs, uh, for our snack and study programs. And we have people who will come in and just do some of the administration or help to just lead some of the parts of the group getting drinks ready, those sorts of things. United Way is a perfect example of bringing organizations together. And so we have initiatives like the Children and Youth Planning Table and Wellbeing Waterloo Region that brings organizations together to increase the safety and well-being and overall mental health of our community as a whole, and together we can do that better than individually as an organization. I get pride every day from the passion and the commitment from the people that do the jobs. I'm so grateful to be able to work with such an amazing staff team who are always out in the community, um, who always are building these connections, and who are always looking for opportunities to be able to leverage the strengths of our community members. Seeing people make gains um, are the reasons that I get up every day and go to work. I tell people every day, I love my job, I love the organization I work for, and I love the community we support because the people we support are amazing. I'm thrilled and passionate about getting to work with Corizon. I think for me it was a very intentional choice to be continuing to do my work with Corizon because I really do believe that mental health resources are a human right and a community good. This is something that I believe everyone should have access to. I am also really passionate about the fact that I am able to be with people at their most difficult point. I find it's just such a humbling and passion of mine that when people come in, they share stories with me that they maybe have never told anyone before, and they're able to find a safe place. And we're able to help support them to make new and better choices or help, help support them in finding an emotional way of dealing with sometimes very difficult situations. We're here at Community Justice Initiatives in Kitchener. This organization focuses on restorative justice to help people rebuild relationships and connection. Uh, my name is Chris Cowley and I'm the Executive Director here at Community Justice Initiatives. Our main purpose is to do restorative justice programming. Restorative justice is a new way of looking at justice, a way that um, doesn't sort of fall into the same old paradigm of trying to punish somebody when they've done something wrong and expect that somehow they're going to learn a lesson out of that and that that somehow makes a victim satisfied. What we actually do is we bring people together and we assist them to be able to resolve some of their own problems. We are a product of this community. And so Rotterdam Region has had a rich history of being able to look at things like justice in a bit of a different way. And really CJI sprang out of that kind of a, an idea that somebody looked at one particular situation that actually happened back in 1974, uh, where some young guys had committed a crime that really affected the neighborhood in Elmira. It actually uh, affected about 22 different people in that community. And rather than simply bringing them before a judge and having them go to jail and, and and, uh, uh, and pay in that kind of a way, this person actually imagined that if we brought these two guys together with the victims of their crime, that something different might come out of it. And something did. There was some real harmony that took place that day. The people that were impacted by our direct service, where we were directly assisting them and to resolve some kind of conflict, amounts to 3,022 people in one year. And in addition to that, when we add up the workshops and the trainings that we do, that reach has actually expanded to over 22,000 people that are impacted by the work that we do. One of the reasons why that figure of how many people we impact is so important, is that when we assist people in resolving conflict, one of the things that we've learned is that it actually builds their own capacity to be able to resolve conflict in a much smarter way moving forward. So not only have we assisted them to resolve a conflict that's outstanding in their life, but we've actually enabled them to resolve other conflicts in a more meaningful kind of way as well. So we're really changing the community, basically one conflict at a time now. Way. And so you would think for that kind of reach, you must have a really large organization. Well, we sort of do and we sort of don't. We're a small staff of under 30 people, but we also have 215 volunteers in our organization that carry out a tremendous amount of work. So the United Way has been a very important part of, um, uh, of our sort of funding structure at CJI. Um, 
A lot of the work at Community Justice Initiatives is not easy to explain really quickly. It's not something that people even see an immediate kind of need for. This is where the United Way has been the most helpful in being able to assist us with funding in some of the most difficult areas to get funding. One population that we work with quite a bit are those who have committed sexual offenses. Now that's a population that uh, uh, become very much pariahs in our society. If we choose to just make them into pariahs, and if we choose to simply stigmatize them and always act in an angry way toward them, we actually exacerbate the problem. These are people, for the most part, who actually do want to change and have the capacity to change. And our work with them has been proven over and over again through the years that these people do not reoffend, And we have them in peer support groups where they're able to work with each other and hold each other accountable in a way that makes our community safe. That's not an easy thing to go out and to raise money for. And so the United Way has been behind us in that. And as a result of that, has really resulted in our community being a lot safer kind of place. We rely hugely on people to be able to support us financially. Our organization operates with many, many volunteers. And the volunteers that we have, I would say, are, they're really our heart and soul. They get to do work that you wouldn't normally do in many other organizations. Um, they're the ones that are actually being trained to do kind of mediation work, to facilitate groups, to do that. So people who are interested in that can certainly help with that. But in addition to that, I'm simply proud of the fact that so many people are willing to look at the idea of justice through a very different lens. And that's just controversial in and of itself. Whereas most people are still stuck in this idea that there really is only one way to deal with a person once they've done something wrong. If they're not punished, no good will, will come of it. So when people have the courage to look at that and then begin to reject the things that they see that don't work in favor of things that might seem a little counterintuitive, but then fully involve themselves in things where you really begin to see how people are helped, that takes courage as well. And so I'm proud of all of our staff and our volunteers who do this work on a daily basis. United Way is really about local solutions to local problems. Oftentimes when people are focusing on or experiencing some challenges in their lives, it's not just one problem and we need to make sure we're wrapping around that person with whatever solutions they need. We are local fundraisers that invest in local agencies doing vital work right here in our community. We are also uh, the second largest funder of social services uh, in the community, aside only to government. And the money we have to distribute to these organizations which are doing such vital work comes from community donors in here in our community, as well as really generous businesses and corporations that partner with us as well. You know, members of the community are a real value to all the agencies that are in our community and they can provide support in a number of different ways. You can volunteer, you can give, and both of those things can be very easy. You can reach out to an organization like the Volunteer Action Center uh, to help find volunteer opportunities or reach out to an organization that you're really connected to. And giving is equally as easy through United Way to, to support the full network of agencies 